Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about how to find out what the laws are uh, for your state of concerning homeschooling. Specifically for myself, I am in North Carolina, so I'm going to be digging deeper into what the North Carolina laws are for homeschooling. And to start off with, let me just say that I am a fact checker. When someone tells me um, about, you know, that they're doing something with their homeschool because they have to do this or this, or they're worried about doing a certain thing because of what is legally required and it is nothing that I've ever heard of. I'm not going to just take that information and run with it um, as fact. I'm going to look it up for myself. I dug into all of the laws and looked up things and now that my daughter is getting into high school years I am looking into more things because I am concerned about doing things wrong <laughs> and I want to make sure that I am you know about and by the law and doing everything the right way. So yeah, anytime anybody tells me something is fact and I don't know that fact for myself, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to do some research on it and that is what I'm going to do with you today. I'm not here to tell you that you are doing your homeschool wrong and that I am right or anything like that. I am just going to read the laws for you. Maybe you've never looked up the North Carolina laws um, or you don't know how to look up the laws for your state where you are at and I'm just going to help you with that. So before we jump into it, let me real quick introduce myself. If you've never met me, hi, my name is Brooke. Uh, we are a family of five. We have three kids, ages one, eight, and 12, almost 13. So that is um, a not homeschooler, a third grader, and an eighth grader. So we've been doing this for a couple years now. Um, cumulatively, I think we've got five years now under our belt. Um, working on our fifth year, we homeschooled a little bit, took a break, and now we're back at it. So I've looked into the laws. You know, we registered our homeschool. We've been doing this for a couple years. Um, and I just want to share what I have learned with you guys. Um, if you have not seen any of my other videos, you can go back and check out my channel. If this information on this video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. That would really help out my channel. And so let's jump into it. My favorite website, and I'm going to be pulling this up on my tablet and just reading it off to you. I may turn around and show it to you, but I'm just going to be reading the information and the facts off to you. So first off, my favorite website that I found when we started homeschooling is hslda.org. hslda.org. I'll pop that up on the screen, put a link to the website in the description. That stands for Homeschool Legal Defense Association.org. Um, and I love the website. It is it is a .org, so it is a nonprofit, um, and they you can like do memberships that helps them. And they have a lot of resources out there for you. Um, and I'll I'll read off some of those things to so you if you've never heard of this website. Um, let me go ahead and open this up and show you. But they've got a link to every state um, so that you can find the laws for your state. So HSLDA. Um, this is what it looks like. Oops, sorry, glare. This is what it looks like on tablet form. I know that's not very clear, um, but you can look that up for yourself. I'm just going to read this off to you. When you get to this website, that was the main screen, you're going to go to the tab for legal. And as soon as you get to that, it's going to show you a map of the United States. I, hope, I, know, you can't, I know you can't see that super well, but it's going to show you a map of the United States and you just click your state. And this right here has information itself. You can see that it has different colors. That tells you which ones, um, which states have low regulation, moderate, and high regulation. Uh, North Carolina is considered a moderate. And you can click any of these states and it will send you to the website for that state. Um, every state is a little bit different, I think, as far as where their homeschool uh, department is under, like which, um, which legal department it is under. You know, have all these steps of who, who has to answer to who. So I'm just going to click on North Carolina, but if you were in any state, you can go to this website and you can go to your state's website for your homeschool laws. So for North Carolina, you click on that and it sends you to a page that has just North Carolina. Um, it says North Carolina homeschool laws at a glance. Um, school required for ages seven through six. That is something that a lot of people ask when they start kindergarten. Do I need to uh, register my homeschool? because my kid is starting kindergarten. Not necessarily, though, and I'll get to this later, but I just want to touch on this since I read it. Unless your child is turning seven in that school year, you're supposed to register your homeschool. But if you're starting kindergarten early or on time, you know, they're four or five years old, gonna turn six, you do not have to register yet. You can if you want to. They, I think they would rather you not, just to not bombard the system until you have to register. Okay, um, teacher qualifications, yes. State mandated subjects, no. That one surprises a lot of people. 
assessment requirements, yes. Immunization requirements, yes. And there are exceptions to that. Um, let's see, options for homeschooling, one. I'm not exactly sure what that means. I'm going to click on that. Uh, how to compile with North Carolina's homeschool law. I'm not really sure what that meant. I think that means that you have to, I think it's referring to the way that you submit your notice of intent, that there's only one notice of intent. Um, not 100% on that, but I think that's what that means. So when you click into it, it, it keeps you on the HSLDA website, um, but it's giving the North Carolina uh, requirements. So I'm going to read those off to you. And there are links in here that will send you to the actual North Carolina website, and I'll tell you about that in a second. So, number one, submit a notice of intent. This is the requirements. Submit a notice of intent. Ensure that the teachers in your homeschool have the required qualifications. Provide the required days of instruction. Keep attendance and immunization records. Administer an annual standardized test. Close your homeschool six requirements in North Carolina. That was the requirements. That was it. I'll go into a little bit more detail about those. Number one, submit your notice of intent. That is where you go to the North Carolina Department of Non-Public Education. That is what the homeschool is under, North Carolina Department of Non-Public Education. I'm going to click on there and from this website they have a link to the DNPE's website. I'm going to click that. And it sends you to the State of North Carolina Department of Non-Public Education. That is under the North Carolina Administration. Um, that's in Raleigh and there's a phone number and like a 800 number that you can call and it goes to Raleigh. So I'm going to click back out of this. That is the website that you have to go to to, to submit your notice of intent. If you're going to be opening and op operating a homeschool in North Carolina and your child is between the ages of 7 and 16 in that school year at the beginning of the school year or I mean at any time in that school year they're going to turn 7 you have to file that notice of intent. It's not a request. They can't deny unless you don't submit the required paperwork. Um, they will deny you submitting it if that makes sense. You're not asking for approval to homeschool. You are submitting your notice of intent. It's not a submission of acceptance or anything like that if that makes sense. They are not looking at what you're submitting to say that you're not qualified enough. You're just submitting the required paperwork and they say, okay, we understand that you are opening a homeschool. Here's your homeschool number or your homeschool ID. So here's what you have to submit with your notice of intent. Um, you have to, and this is where it goes into this, ensure your teachers in your homeschool have the required qualifications. The person who's going to be doing the day-to-day -day teaching has to have a high school diploma or GED equivalent. When you do that notice of intent, you have to submit a copy of your diploma. Um, make sure you have that on hand if you're going to be start submitting your notice of intent because they want that. I had some trouble with mine. There were some mix-ups, so make sure you got all that in order before you try to submit. Um, and you'll have to pick your homeschool name. I'll put a link to the video I did, but I did a video about how um, the simple steps of to opening your homeschool and I explain all that. So you submit your notice of intent. That was number one. Number two, ensure the teacher in your homeschool has the required qualifications. Like I said, you have to have GED equivalent, high school diploma um, for whoever's going to be doing the teaching. You have to have a teacher. You have to list your teachers and you list your um, homeschool administrator. Provide the required days of instruction. Here's what it says. Your homeschool must operate on a regular schedule for at least nine calendar months each year except for, quote, reasonable holidays and vacations. And that is word for word off of the North Carolina Department of Non-Public Education's website. That's the law. There is no required hours. I'm, I'm reading this to you. Like, I'm reading it. <laughs> I'm not making this up. There are no required hours, no required days. It says, operate on a regular schedule for at least nine calendar months each year, except for reasonable holidays and vacations. So it's a gray area. There's no, you have to do it 180 days. Nobody ever said in North Carolina that you had to operate for 180 days. I think some states do have required days or required hours, but North Carolina does not have required days and hours. That, I think that shocks a lot of people. I have talked to people in my area, local to me, who think that they have to have a certain number of days, and you don't. It says it. You don't. Not that I'm against having a, a full amount of school days to get, you know, to get your child what they need learned in the school year. We do more than 180 days, I, I feel pretty sure, because some of our days are not full days and we end up going 
you know, needing more days to finish the curriculum that I pick out. So I am all in favor of having 180 or more days in the year. <laughs> <laughs> or less if you don't need it you, you know you do what you need to do to, to get the subjects learned and completed all right next keep attendance and immunization records um, and they have a, a link on here where you can go to the website to print out um, they have a provided attendance record sheet uh, it works perfect you just go in and put a little check mark or an x on all the blocks and just keep it um, it says that you should keep that for a year i believe it doesn't I don't think it says it in here but when you click into the north carolina website it says that you should keep those on record for a year all right, it says you can download a homeschool attendance form. It's highlighted uh, from the DNPE's website, and that's the one that I was talking about, to use, um, although the use of this form is not mandatory. You can make up your own on a spreadsheet or something. Immunization records can be obtained from your child's health care provider. Information about medical and religious exemptions from immunizations is available on the website, and it gives another link of the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. It's a link to that website so that you can get information if you um, do not do immunizations and you need to get the form or whatever you need um, about being exempt for the immunization records. Um, so you keep that attendance record, keep your immunization record or your um, form saying that you're exempt. Number five, administer an annual standardized test. This is what a lot of homeschoolers call the SAT, the end of year testing, you know, however you want to call it. You, you have the like the 10th, 11th grade SAT test. This is not the same thing. This is just a, um, what do you call it? S SAT stands for standardized achievement test. It just tests your child on what they have learned so far. Um, it'll like if you have a fourth grader, they'll get a test that has um, like third, fourth and fifth grade information questions on it and when the test results come back it'll say that your child scored on an average fifth fifth grade level or fourth grade level or a little under and they scored on a third grade level it just shows you where your child's at on a national average and you are required to do that every year and keep those records on hand you are required to keep it for a year although it is in the recommendations to keep it indefinitely so you that is one requirement you have to do the standardized test every year let me read some of this. At least once during every school year, you must test your child using a nationally standardized test or other nationally standardized equivalent measurement. The test you choose must measure achievement in the areas of English grammar, reading, spelling, and mathematics. No history, no science. For one year after the testing, your child's test scores must be kept available at the principal's office of your homeschool at all reasonable hours for annual inspection by a duly authorized representative of the state of North Carolina. So that just means you should keep your records in case somebody from North Carolina wants to kind of do an audit of your homeschool. Although the DNPE has attempted to perform home visits under this provision, and this is information from HSLDA, the law gives its official no right to enter home homes or to inspect any records besides test scores. There is also no statutory requirement for parents to attend record review meetings arranged by the Division of Non-Public Education for the purpose of reviewing records. So if you ever get into a tight spot with your uh, city, your county, whatever, if someone has reported you because you're homeschooling and they don't agree with it, I don't think this happens so much anymore, but it, I, I believe it did if you read some of the research things um, and resources on this website, it will tell you a lot of the struggles that homeschoolers had in the 80s and 90s. So if you ever get into a tight spot, I would refer to this website because they have a lot of good resources and they can get you in touch with people who can help you. All right, number six, close your homeschool. When you stop homeschooling in North Carolina or if you move out of the state, you must notify the DNPE that your homeschool has closed. You can close your homeschool after logging into the DNP's website. So if you leave the state, you have to close your homeschool. If your kid is graduated and you have no more kids, you should close your homeschool. It just helps them with their records to know how many homeschools are open and operating in North Carolina. And also, if you go to another state, you need to close this one and open um, in a new state and find out what the laws are for the state you're moving to. So that's it. There are so many things that I have heard in my homeschooling journey that, you know, of people saying I had to have so many hours or my kid had to do this subject or that subject. And it's not the case. There's no curriculum standard in North Carolina. You don't have to teach a certain curriculum. You don't have to teach a certain amount of hours. There's just, it's, it is wide open for you to personalize your kids uh, school to them for what they need. Um, now, 
I do have an, a rising ninth grader, so we are looking at high school stuff. I don't have to do any certain subject according to North Carolina. But if you go to the DNPE's website or just Google North Carolina or whatever your state um, high school requirements. When I was Googling this because I wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything, I don't want to mess up my daughter's high school. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of scared about high school. I'm excited and scared at the same time because she's going to get to do all these cool subjects, um, but I want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. So I'm just going to, let me just find it. I'm going to Google uh, high school North Carolina requirements and see if I, it comes up with the same website that I always go to. Yep, there we go. Now, what you will find, and this is, uh, this is under North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, not homeschool, not the non-public. This is under North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. And this is where I have found this. You can get um, the listed by year. Hold on. Okay, so this is 21 to 22. And I found this. It was the first website that popped up. So this gives a list of all the different classes that you could take under all these different subjects down to the electives. And this is list by the year. This is what was required by public schools um, in those years. I was trying to find, and I'll put links to these in the description. To I'll put a link to this website as well um, in case you're curious about high school requirements. Now, it's not the requirement of North Carolina. This is just to give you a guideline, and this is what I have looked at for a guideline for myself for high school to know what they what public school requires so that I can kind of get close. I don't want my daughter to say that she... You know, if someone is asking her what classes she's taken and she's a sophomore, I don't want her to not have anything even remotely close to what a normal, normal uh, sophomore is taking in North Carolina. I want her to be able to say, you know, biology, chemistry, algebra two, you know, or whatever, geometry, anything that, you know, the normal stuff. Um, and I, I'm trying to get it in line with what public school does, although I'm, I'm not worried about her doing what public school is doing. Don't get me wrong. Um, I just want to kind of keep it in line. And I am keeping... Um, keeping her, I've already got some of her stuff picked out and lined up for you know, like her plan for high school. Okay, another website, North Carolina DOA, North Carolina Public School Curriculum and UNC System Minimum Admission Requirements. This is what I was getting at. I am keeping my daughter um, in line with what she would need if she was to go on to college. I am all for her going to college um, if that is what she chooses to do. I am all for her not going to college. If she has a career path in mind and she is going to study something that only requires, you know, a certificate or a diploma or some lower level college at a local community college and she's happy with that and I know that she is doing her best and what she loves and it's good for her and all that kind of stuff, I am happy for that too. If she needs to go to a four-year college to accomplish what she's wanting to get done, I'm all for that too. Um, we are not going to push her to go to college just for the sake of going to college. But I am going to make sure that she has what she needs. This is under North Carolina Department of Administration, and I will link this website too. All these websites I will link in the description. And this lists the courses that you would take for future ready and then college ready. I think that shows future ready. I'm used to looking at this on a desktop. And then you get college ready. Did, it, did I pass it? All right. Well, anyway, there's two of them. If you go on a desktop, it looks different. So there's future ready and co college ready. No, future ready is, sorry, future ready. So there's one, I forget what it's called, but there's a future ready, which is college. And then there's um, like a career ready. And it gives you the different uh, things that the North Carolina or the UNC college requires for your admission. Um, it is not what is required for North Carolina diploma, and that makes no sense at all to me. It is not required by North Carolina for you to have these classes in order to get your diploma. But the North Carolina colleges require this for admission. So I'd say it's a pretty good guideline to follow for your child for their homeschool, high school pathway. Um, and it lists the different classes, like for social studies, it says you should have four credits, and it lists four different classes. Founding Principles of the United States of America and North Carolina Civic Literacy. That's one, one credit. And then Economics and Personal Finance. American History, World History. That's the four social studies credits. 
um, world languages, it says not required for high school graduation. You do not have to have a second language for a high school diploma. But it says a two credit minimum is required for admission to a university in the UNC system. So not required because in North Carolina they do not require you to have a certain curriculum or certain subjects at any time. So this is what I have been looking at recently, um, the different classes that are UNC required, just so that we have a basis um, for what my daughter should be doing in her high school pathway. And that is it. That is, I just wanted to, it's kind of a rant for me to share what was the North Carolina law. I don't think I said anything that was my opinion as far as the laws. I tried to just read this off to you and there is more. That HSLDA website has so many resources. You should really go check it out if you are looking into homeschooling or you are currently homeschooling and you're not familiar with all the laws and resources. I would definitely take a look at that website. It is a great resource. Um, and then Department of Non-Public Education for North Carolina. And if you are not familiar with your state's laws, go check them out. Um, make sure that you do your research and you are doing everything correctly for your own peace of mind <laughs> because you'll have people come and telling you that you are doing it wrong. You should be doing this and you should be doing that. And um, just for your own peace of mind, go check out the laws for yourself. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you are not already. I hope y'all have a great day. Bye.